I welcome you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Today we want to talk about wake up. That's the topic of today. Wake up. Why this call? So going to this message, we will know why the Lord actually wants us to wake up. Let us pray. God, thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your goodness. For everything you've done for us. Lord, we ask that you wake us up from every kind of slumber. Wake us up, Lord, the way you wake the disciples up. In the garden, when they were to wash with you, Lord, wake us up and give us zeal. Zeal that will consume every tiredness, zeal that will consume every reason to give up. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Let's open up our Bibles to Revelation chapter 3. We're going to read from verse 1, Revelation 3. And unto the angel of the church in Sardis write, These things Seeth he that had the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know thy works, that thou hast the name, that thou livest and art dead. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. For I have not found thy works perfect before God. Let's read chapters, uh, verses. 3 and 4. Remember therefore how thou hast received and heard, and hold fast and repent. Therefore, thou sh if thou, if therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know the, what hour I will come upon thee. Thou hast a few names. Even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments. And they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. Verses 5 and 6. He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment. And I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before the angels, before his angels. He that had an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said unto the churches. Praise God. This is a wake-up call to all of us who profess the faith of Christ. If you look at the spiritual clock of the church today, and you see clearly, and interpret it clearly, you will know that we are in one of the most dangerous times, a phase of the world that has never existed before. It is a time that we are crossing over to the other side of life. According to the timing of this lifespan of this world, we have just crossed over and we are still crossing over to the other side of life where the real tribulations that Jesus Christ talked about and the prophets in the Bible warned about where we are going to start experiencing them. We who are the children of Issachar that's supposed to be on our watch. A lot of us are asleep probably because we looked for children and we couldn't get them. Because we looked for money, we couldn't get them. Some of us were fired during the COVID-19 pandemic because we refused to accept their narratives. And up to now, there has been no meaningful job. Even your due may have not been given to you. The Lord is waking us up. It could be because of your own compromise your own heart, you made up your mind that you're going to compromise because of the trials you're facing. 
it is time to wake up. Listen, righteous man may fall a hundred times. Even if he falls seven times, he will rise up again. So falling is not a problem. Although falling is not God's plan for your life. But waking up and picking up your faith is of most importance. The church in Sardis, they had a name that they were alive, but they were dead. And Jesus Christ warned them that if you are not careful, if you will not watch and strengthen the things that remain, that are ready to die, I will come upon thee quickly, and you will not know the hour I will come upon thee. Listen, this is a warning that is coming to us today that it is time to wake up and be faithful to our calling. A lot of people have given up and are asleep. They are asleep because of trials, because of different kind of things. But if nothing will motivate you at all, the place of eternity, where you're going to spend eternity, should be your motivation. We have been born into this world and we have no choice than to obey. The repercussions of disobedience is everlasting destruction. It is not everlasting annihilation whereby uh, something is totally destroyed. It is the destruction that never ends forever and ever. I have a burden in my heart today to warn believers, including myself, that in any way we are asleep, it is time to wake up. The Lord wants us wake up, woken up. Uh, let me show you something in the Bible. Matthew chapter 25. Chapter 25, when you read from verse 1, you see the story of the ten virgins, the five foolish and the five wise. But I want us to look at these verses. Listen, why the bridegroom tarried? They all slumbered and slept. Listen, you may, be, you may have been on fire for God. You have enough oil in your lamp, but... Because of trials, because you have overweighted, you have fallen asleep. It could be that the very people you trusted with all your heart have betrayed you. The very ones that even probably they brought you to Christ, they introduced you to the good news. And you accepted the good news. Probably they have turned their back on you. And stab you at the back. This passage should encourage us. Both the foolish and the wise, they all slept. Why? Because the bridegroom tarried. Jesus Christ said, Behold, I come quickly. In Revelation, and we've been waiting till now. We haven't seen him. Today, a lot of people. Who are supposed to speak for Jesus Christ are even the ones telling us that we need to build a fortune here. They have taken this world as their home. They are making money, heaping wealth for themselves, buying private jets, and living all the good life. There's nothing wrong living a good life. But don't forget where you're going. Where your treasures are treasure is there your heart will be also the fact that they have chosen to lay all the treasures here tells us the truth that they are asleep and it is time to wake up i don't know what put you to sleep but once it is sure the lord is calling you to wake up verse 6 and at midnight there was a cry made Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose, entering their lamps. 
all of them, both the foolish and the wise. Ten of them rose up. You slept. Yes, you slept. But that is not a problem now. The problem is that you have refused to stand up. It is painful for the prophetic word of Jesus Christ, which he said, the first shall be the last and the last shall be the first to come to pass in your life in a negative way. If Jesus Christ said, the first shall be the last and the last shall be the first, you shouldn't be on the negative side of the fulfillment of this prophecy. Sometimes we become so zealous in preaching the good news of Jesus Christ. And some other times we see ourselves looking backward. But in whichever way, let us know that God has one will for us. And the will of God for us is never to look back. Luke chapter 9 verse 62. And Jesus said unto them, No man, having put his hand to the plow, and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of heaven. No man, there is no reason for looking back. What is the problem? Have you given up because life is treating you badly? Where is your plow? Have you dropped it? Remember where you were falling from. Just like the letter of Jesus Christ to the church in Sardis. He told them. He said, be watchful and stressing the things which remain that are ready to die. For I have not found that works perfect before God. You were once in Christ. You used to pray three hours, two hours, one hour, 30 minutes, 20 minutes. Today, you can pray anymore. Remember the first love you had for God. Remember therefore how thou hast received and heard. Remember when you first received the gospel. And how much you burned for the Lord. How much zeal you had. Remember where you're falling from. We all have down times in our lives. We all have moments of weaknesses in our lives. But we should always be challenged to look back. What has made you to look back? The things you used to run away from. Are you romancing them today? The things you used to see as abomination in the sight of the Lord, are those things your best friends today? Have you started using the same scriptures you use in condemning sin to defend your actions today? Are you looking for separate and private interpretation to the word of God because you want to feel good in Christianity. Remember how thou hast received and heard. And repent. And go back to your first love. He that puts his hand to the plow is no longer fit for the kingdom of God if he looks back. Have you looked back? Probably people are still looking at you and they are saying, Yeah, this brother is the standard. This brother is a fire for God. The sister is on fire. This woman is on fire. Not knowing that you are falling out of grace. Are you still standing? Or you are falling from grace? Listen to the frustration of Apostle Paul when he wrote to the Galatians. He said in Galatians chapter 5, verse, verse 7, following, You did run well. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? Before you were running well, you had so much zeal for the work of the Lord. 
Now what happened? Who is the one hindering you from running well and from obeying the truth? This persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lamp. Oh, it doesn't matter. Oh, it doesn't matter anything. I can just do it and, and, and confess to God. Oh, we are living in the era of grace. Little leaven leaveneth the whole lamp. If you hide sin, no matter how small it will grow, it will grow to the point that it will become a controlling factor in your life. How much have you looked back? Are you still running well as you used to do? Falling is not a problem. The problem is remaining falling. Fall is not a problem. The problem is you refusing to rise up at all. Proverbs chapter 24 verse 16. For a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again. But the wicked shall fall into mischief. Righteous men may fall even seven times, but he rises up again. What stops you from rising? Let me tell you something. Sometimes we fall and don't even realize that we are falling. But those in the world, they know that we have changed. Some of us, we become so complacent that we don't even know that our fire is going down. After 2020, a lot of people refuse to go back to church. A lot of people who used to burn for the Lord are no longer burning. They are no longer on fire for the Lord. They just choose to remain on their own. If you take a firewood from the fire and keep it in a secluded place, it's a matter of time. It will go off. There is no more fellowship in the lives of many Christians today. Please, fellowship. Your fire is going down. You used to preach to people. Today, do you need to be preached to by those you preached to before? Let me tell you what, what happened some time ago. I gave my life to Christ when I was about uh, around 13, 14 years old. And then a time came in my life that we changed the environment. And after we changed our environment, I was preaching. I used to talk, talk to people about Jesus Christ. Uh, that was about when I was 15, 16 years old. I used to talk to people about Jesus Christ. Repent. I used to talk to people. And then I started looking backward because there were so many pagans there. A day came that one of the boys, we lived together in the same environment, in the same village. I saw the sister passed. The sister walked by and I said, Ah, Joe, this here sister is getting old enough for food. And then he looked at me. This young man looked at me. When I said, this your sister is old enough for food, he looked at me and shouted. He said, Hosanna, you used to preach to us about Jesus Christ. You used to preach to us. You used to tell us that fornication is a sin. Look at what you're doing. Man, I was ashamed. I was really ashamed. I needed nobody to tell me, to remind me that I had fallen. There are some of us, when we fall, we brag about it. We don't see anything wrong with it. We see it as a normal way of life. But I tell you, there is nothing normal about your downfall. If you fall, Rise up. Thank God, year 2000, 2000, I made up my mind that I must go back to the Lord. And I went back. And since then, the grace of God has been keeping me. Even when I was falling, there were levels He never allowed me to fall to. And He brought me back by grace. May the Lord God Almighty restore as many that are struggling in their Christian lives today in the name of Jesus. 
Look at Jeremiah chapter 8. Look at what God is saying here. This is, if you read this very well, you will see the frustration here. God wants us to rise up. So what are you waiting for? Why don't you rise up? Hell is waiting. Heaven is waiting. Why don't you rise up and make up your mind today and make a choice? A choice you will stick to forever and never look back. Jeremiah 8, 4-7 Moreover, thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord, Shall they fall and not rise? Shall they fall and not arise? Shall he turn away and not return? Why then is this people of Jerusalem sliding back by a perpetual backsliding? They fall and they keep falling and falling and falling. They don't look back. They hold fast this it. They refuse to return. They refuse to return to the Lord. I hearken and an head, but they speak not aright. No man repented him of his wickedness, saying, What have I done? Everyone turned to his cause, as a horse rushed into the battle. Yea, the stalk in the heaven knoweth how pointed times, and the turtle, and the crane, and the swallow, Observe the time of their coming. But my people know not the judgment of the Lord. If you fall, will you not rise? Looking at the evil that is going on in the world today, the level of corruption that is going on should tell us that the time of the end is now. Why do you want to remain in that same position? Why not rise up? Why not rise up? Why not strive for the faith that was once delivered unto us? Luke chapter 13, 24 to 28. This passage is a call. This is a call to return to the Lord. This is a call. To return to our maker. Let's read. Strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many I say unto you, we seek to enter in and shall not be able. When once the master of the house is risen up and I shut to the door. And ye begin to stand without and to knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us, and he shall answer and say unto you, I know you not whence ye are. Then shall ye begin to say, We have eaten and drunk in thy presence, and thou hast taught in our streets. But he shall say, I tell you, I know you not whence ye are. Depart from me. All you workers of iniquity. These shall be, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. When ye shall see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God. And you yourselves thrust out. May this not be your portion in the name of Jesus. What stops you from returning today? What is holding you back? Is it that girlfriend? That boyfriend? Is it that job? What is holding you back? What is that thing that is holding you back? What stops you from returning to the Lord? What is that particular sin? What is that particular thing you don't want to compromise about? You have so much stuck to it and you care not about Returning to the Lord again. Listen, if you are touched and you need counseling, you need prayer, you want to give your life to Christ, feel very free to reach me. Salvation is free. 
It's time to return to the Lord. I'm talking to myself too. I know the areas I have gone back. I know the areas I'm no longer burning. I know the areas I am lukewarm. I know the areas of my life that I need to wake up. I know the areas not because that not because I have looked back, but because I have not grown enough as the Lord wants me to grow. I know those areas in my life. And I need to fix them. Fix your own too. You got to fix your life too. Fix your life. Don't tell me you can't pray. When you can be on social media for three hours. The same way you can stick to social media. That same way. Stick to prayers. Start small. You could start with 15 minutes. With 20 minutes. 30 minutes. And you're growing to one hour. Two hours. Start to pray. Make a decision. Send a test message. That I'm no longer interested in this relationship anymore. If that relationship is leading you to hell, please come out of it. I tell you the truth. A lot of people who profess Christ today are going to end up in hell. Let me tell you something that is going to scare you even more. Majority of today's Christians will end up in hell, including some with the miracles they left salvation to pursue. They are all heading to hell. Many are called, but few are chosen. Will you be among that few? I spoke to a boy this past week. He told me, oh, he shouted me up. He told me, have nothing is working, nothing is working. I asked him, are you born again? He said, yes. Do you have a girlfriend? He said, yes, he has a girlfriend. Do you sleep with her? He said, yes. And I told him, you are not born again. I wondered, I wonder what some people call born again. The definition of being born again by some people, the definition some people have is totally wrong. And I told him, if you're really born again, if a woman gets naked for you, a woman strips naked, you will fly through the window and escape for yourself. You will escape for your life. This time around, you are the one befriending this person and sleeping with her, yet you claim to be born again. To be born again means you are born of God. You are a child of God. You are a Christian. You have a Christ-like life. You don't do the things Jesus Christ wouldn't do. Are you born again? Are you in the faith? Or you have looked back? Let us pray. Father, please draw us to yourself. Draw your children, as many that are living in sin, as many that have looked back. Probably someone accused you, and because of that accusation, you have chosen to go to any land to prove your innocence. Remember, Jesus Christ was also accused. Lord, help these your children. As many that are returning to you, Lord, help them to return in full in the name of Jesus Christ. May your return to God not be in vain. May the power of the Lord lift you up. I pray for you that the glory of the Lord will find you in that darkness. Let the glory of God shine the light of a living God upon your life and restore you back to your Savior. That challenge that made you to look back, that challenge that made you to throw away your faith, as you were coming to God, may the Lord fix it for you. Oh Lord God, thank you for your goodness and your love. Thank you, Lord God, because we know you've answered us. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your love. Lord, I pray for as many that are having one challenge or the other. Step into their situation. Heal their sicknesses. Destroy the power of poverty. 
Destroy the yoke of oppression from their lives. Lord, destroy the power of lukewarmness. Father, arise and help your children to know you more. Help your children to love you and to follow you all the days of their lives. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer. Even as we remember those who have been sponsored in our ministry. Lord, we pray that you open the windows of heaven upon their lives. And release your blessings in abundance. Those who don't have, Lord, we pray that you bless them abundantly. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus Christ's name, we are afraid. Amen. Thank you for watching. Please, if you are not subscribed to this channel, subscribe to this channel. Follow us across social media, uh, our social media platforms. The narrow ways Christ for all nations. Thank you, and God bless you. See you next time. Bye bye.